Today, I'm going to show you how to manage your Raspberry Pi backups. Here, you can see that this is a backup of the Raspberry Pi micro SD card. The file size is huge. It's about 15 gigabytes. That's a lot. Now, as you know, the micro SD cards are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So right now, you can get 64 gigabytes for about 10 bucks. That's dirt cheap. But after you make a backup of it, it will be 64 gigabytes, and that's way too much, more than necessary to store as a backup file. You can easily shrink it down. So in today's example, we're going to shrink this micro SD card backup that was originally 16 gigabytes, and we're going to shrink it down to something a lot smaller. Before we resize, let's recap a little bit, okay? Whatever settings that you made to your Raspberry Pi into the micro SD card, you've probably spent a lot of time working on it. If you've never backed up your work, never backed up the micro SD card, now is the time to do it. Insert the micro SD card into your computer. Choose the appropriate drive letter that was assigned to that micro SD card. So for instance, choose the S drive if that's your micro SD card. Click on the folder, choose a folder that you want to store it in. In this example, it's going to be my X drive program settings folder, Odori. Give it a name, whatever name it is, .img file. Click on open, and then click on read. When you click on read, it's going to start backing up your micro SD card. And by the time it hits 100%, that's when it's done. When it's done, it will say something like read successful or backup successful, and then you can click on exit to exit. So let's say this is the file that it created with the backup. Now it's the time to shrink it down because this is more than necessary. There's a lot of empty space in this 16 gigabyte micro SD card. The best thing about this shrinking process is that you can still use Windows. You don't have to touch Linux. You don't have to do a boot into Linux because Linux is now part of Windows 10. On the left hand side, you can see this is all of my notes. So if you want, you can jump ahead real quick. So first, we're going to be installing Virtual Machine Platform and Windows Subsystem. On your keyboard, hold down Window E, E for Explorer, and it will open this up. Click on this PC, click on Uninstall or Change a Program. On the left-hand side, click on Turn Windows Feature On or Off. Now, make sure that Virtual Machine Platform is checked right here. I did it already. Make sure that this is checked as well, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Click OK. It should start downloading, installing, and then reboot. Next, you want to download the WSL2. You can download from this website right here. Just open another browser and go straight to it. Scroll down a little bit and go to step number four. Download the latest package, WSL2. It will start downloading the MSL file. As you can see, I already downloaded it. After you download it, install it. If it asks you to reboot, go ahead and reboot as well. Now click on the Start menu and open the Microsoft Store, S-T-O-R, search for Ubuntu, and choose Ubuntu 22.04.1 LTS. Click on Install or Setup. I already have mine installed, so that's why you only see the Open option. When you run it for the first time, it's going to ask you to create a username and password. Oh, I forgot to mention, we need one more app, and this is the Windows Terminal. Install it and then click on it to open it. Verify that you're using the right version of WSL. Copy and paste this in. So you can see them using WSL version 2. That's good. We need to download a script. You can copy this here and then paste it in your browser. When you go straight to the website, click on RAW. Click on Control S to save it. You can save it wherever you want, but I'm going to save it into my folder that we're going to work on right now. 
Alright, now that we have everything ready installed, we can finally resize the micro SD card back up. Click on this arrow, go to Ubuntu. It's loading up Ubuntu and now we're in. Let's jump to this Ojoy folder or whatever folder that you want to jump to. CD forward slash ls to see all the files and folder. CD MNT ls to see the folders and files. We need to jump to that X drive with the folders that we are in right now. CD space X, which is where my folder is at right now. Because there's a space, we have to put in quote. Otherwise, if you don't put in quote, it's going to get very confused. Forward slash Ojoy. This is a command to utilize that script that you downloaded and then the IMG file that you want to shrink. So it's sudo space dot forward slash pi shrink dot sh space the IMG file that you want to shrink for me it's pi hole 2021 dot IMG click on enter it's going to ask you for the password so enter in your password that you set up when you install Ubuntu so remember your IMG file originally is 16 gigabytes it's going to shrink it down right now and there you go it's done Within three minutes, less than three minutes, or even two minutes, it shrank the file from 15 gigabyte to 7.4 gig. Or in Windows, it's actually 7.7 .7 gig. That's amazing. That's like half the size right there. I have so many backups that it's not even funny how big they are. But now with this tool and directly in Windows, I can resize it instantly all day. All right, hopefully this helps you with managing all of your Raspberry Pi IMG backups or Libre computer backup, which is the alternative to Raspberry Pi. I'm using Oldroid as well. That's a great alternative. Now that you've successfully backed up your micro SD card and then back up into Windows and then resize it into a manual size, let's say if you need to restore it, how do you do that? Well, we go back to Win32 again. In Win32, this imager, go ahead and find the IMG file. There we go. Pihole2021.img. Pop in your micro SD card and choose the folder. And then click on Write. Click on Write will restore this IMG file back into your micro SD card. All right, hopefully, this video helps you on how to back up your micro SD card, resize it accordingly. Keep multiple backups of it everywhere, in your folder, in your local computer, into the cloud, wherever. And then ultimately restore it if you need. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel and thanks for watching.